welcome! Hello my friends, welcome to the What's Up in Makeup chat. I am hoping that this is working every single time I start. It's like, is it actually working or not? I have no idea and it takes a good 30 seconds to a minute for me to realize whether it's working or not. So good morning to everyone. I'm going to assume that it is working. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you to the collective brain of Makeup Awesomeness, also known as the people who are in the What's Up in Makeup chat this morning. Good morning to you all. I'm going to say good morning to you individually in just a second, but we are going to tell you what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I'm starting to kind of run out of topics. We've talked about a lot of topics in the What's Up in Makeup chat. I mean, we've had 52 topics this year, probably not that many. We've probably had about 48 topics because we do this almost every week. Um, and it's getting closer to the end of the year and it's hard to think of new things to talk about. So I was looking around and I was trying to figure out what we're going to chat about and I was like, well, maybe we can just talk about what I have and give you guys some time to, um, to kind of just ask me questions about products that I have. I can show you things that I have. We can swatch things that I have and just kind of have a big old swatch party and discussion about makeup in general instead of having like a specific topic. Uh, so, you know, I've got all my contouring stuff, I've got my blushes, I've got my eyeshadow palettes, I've got liquid lipsticks, I've got regular lipsticks, I've got single eyeshadows, I've got, I mean, anything you could possibly want to talk about, I have something from that category. Um, primers and, you know, I mean, everything, nail polish and brushes and I figured I would just leave it up to the collective brain to decide which topics we're going to talk about today. Any questions you may have, and I'm already sweating. This is not a good sign. Good thing you guys can't smell me. I did put on deodorant this morning, but I have not showered yet. So, so far, so good. The deodorant is working well. Okay. I'm glad you guys don't have smell o vision I'll tell you that. All right. <laughs> So let's go ahead and, oh, Helen's saying um, you should do a live declutter. And you know, I thought about doing that this morning, but the pressure is so hard on a live declutter because like one thing that I can do is like when I'm actually filming a declutter is I can make a choice and then I can always edit that choice out if I decide I want to keep it. But if it's live, if I say it's gone, it's gone and there's nothing I can do to bring it back. <laughs> You know, because I like to stick by my word when I say I'm going to do something. So before we go anywhere else, um, and I will, we are going to be doing questions in just a second. I want to say hello to the collective brain of makeup awesomeness. Uh, the chat does go pretty quickly, collective brain. So if you are, uh, if you ask me something and I don't see it, feel free to wait a minute and then ask again because I, I don't see everything. So let's go ahead and say hello and good morning to Terry Lee, Nifty and Thrifty. Definitely check out her YouTube channel. Good morning to Roxanne. Good morning to Kelly. Good morning to that girl with curls that I always forget your real name. I know I, I have it somewhere. It's just this file. Good morning, Ivy and Donna and uh, you told me to call you Latina. Yes, because you don't want me to butcher the beginning of your name. <laughs> Latina, welcome. And good, welcome to Denise. Uh, Terry Lee says, Laura Geller fans, there's a surprise site-wide, 50% off sale, no exceptions, no code, but if you enter code HOLLY30, H-O-L-L-Y 30 at checkout, you'll get another 30% off. Are you kidding me? I need to sock up on my uh, my highlighters and blushes from Laura Geller. I love their highlighters and blushes. I also like their whipped lip glosses, the whipped lip products. Those are really nice. I don't know if they still make them, but they're really nice if they do. Um, and Denise's like, oh, that's a good idea. Uh, a good deal, I mean. Uh, Takai is here. Good morning. And Karen is here. Gilded Honey. Exactly, Karen. Little Hammer 05 is here. Working on homemade Christmas gifts while watching. Well, isn't that nice? Good morning to Tabitha. Mwah. Amanda, good morning to you. She's decorating her Christmas tree. Liz, Liz is in the house. And Aspen is here. And Brianna. And Little Hammer 05 says 14 degrees in Wisconsin. Goodness gracious. Reading Mom is in the house. Brianna, thank you for being here. Helen and Deidre and Saucer Jess, good morning. I'm going to go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom. And let's see. And Sarah says, Jen, you should wear your PJs. Most of us probably are. If I had cute PJs, I would totally wear my PJs. But I don't have cute PJs. I wear a tank top and shorts or a tank top and sweatpants, and it's not cute. <laughs> Maybe I should ask my husband for some cute pajamas for Christmas. All right. Uh, Carolyn says, do you ever get overwhelmed by your collection? Feel like you can't keep up since um, the companies are always coming out with new stuff? Yes. I feel overwhelmed by, by my collection all the time. And it's like totally the, the dumbest problem to have, and I agree with this, that having too much makeup is a problem. But it's like one thing that, that I personally have you know, 
not, I'm not happy with sometimes is that I'm constantly trying new things. So there's products that I've bought that I really, really love that I don't get to use as often as I want because I'm trying something new. And it takes me a good week to try something new to get an opinion on it. So it like upsets me that I can't go back and try and you know, use some of the products that I've been enjoying. Like, have I used the, um, the Too Faced, this one? The, the Nikki Tutorials palette, I'm looking at this. I have not used this once since I reviewed it. And it's not like it's a fantastic palette by any means, but it's like I'm looking at it like I haven't used this. I haven't used it, and it's a shame. But the thing is, is I do feel the need to keep a lot of it because then when somebody, you know, when Too Faced comes out with a new palette or somebody else comes out with a new palette and I see that it's similar to the Nikki Tutorials, I can break this out and I can swatch it. So it's important for me to keep stuff like this even if I'm not using it regularly, but at the same time, it's kind of sad, you know? And when I feel the most overwhelmed is when there's a mess going on. Um, there you go, <laughs> Tabitha says, we have PJs in the Cafe Press Shop. And it's funny because I did buy, when we first came out with a Cafe Press Shop, which is um, Cafe Press slash Jan Lowe's Reviews, I bought the pajamas, and then my dog ate the pants. They were really nice pants, though. I wasn't, the shirt was a little bit, like, it wasn't as soft as I would have liked, but the pants were awesome, and my dog ate them. So I don't have the pants anymore. I'll have to repurchase. Uh, Krista says, you could try doing a look of the week thing so that you could use your favorite products. I should. I should. Uh, and But there's some days, too, that I actually don't do, um, I don't wear makeup every day. Like, yesterday, I didn't wear makeup, so... Kathy says, do you like the Master Palette by Mario? I did not buy it because it was supposed to be super limited edition and it's kind of pointless for me to get something super limited edition if I'm not planning on reviewing it. And it was one of those things where I just wasn't, I didn't have the time on my schedule to review it. I had other things, um, other things listed. Speaking of reviews, I did buy two of the new Smashbox mini palettes after Tati reviewed them. I bought two of them to review because there's... The thing is, the Smashbox eyeshadows, I have issues with Smashbox eyeshadows and that they don't usually work for me, but Tati raved about these things so hard that I really wanted to try them. So those are coming for review. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, Mejrema, I'm going to say, uh, says, what's, what's your favorite category in your collection? My favorite category in my collection is my eyeshadows. Absolutely. I love my eyeshadows. The palettes and the symbols, I love my eyeshadows. I love colors. Colors make me happy. Sarah says, I started being a lot more selective with my makeup purchases, but I'm not a YouTuber doing reviews and whatnot. Yeah, and I, and I would be more selective. Well, I am actually really selective with my purchases. I'm very selective. Um, I try to only get things that I know I'm going to review. I try not to get things that I'm not going to review, but like I broke down. And for example, Too Faced was having a sale on the sketch markers. So I got four of them. Do I need these? No. But I just, I really, um, I wanted to try the colors. I tried the black, and I really like the idea of having more colors for different looks because I want to get more into more artsy eyeshadow. So this would be great tools for doing more artsy looks, more fun things. I also broke down and got some Zoya polishes. That's what I'm wearing on my nails today. Oh my gosh, I'm in love. Um, the one that I'm wearing on my nails today is, where did it go? Is it this one? No. No, that's not it. This one. This one is in the shade Adina. And this is what I'm wearing. And I'll say these were $3 each on Black Friday or Cyber Monday, so I couldn't resist. So I do buy things that um, I don't really need for review, but it's rare. It's rare. Uh, Little Hammer 05 says, Jen, how about that for a topic discussing the first makeup products you, you use, brands, colors, if you remember, etc., and then see if they're still around and what you think of them now? That is a great idea. That is like a mental note thing. I want to do a whole one on that, but since I'm, I didn't say I was going to talk about that this time, I'm going to stick with what I said I was going to do, but that is a fantastic idea because I do actually have a video of my entire makeup collection. It was my first, very, very first video, and it's just a handheld video of me showing what I have in my makeup collection, and it was a bag this big, and that was my entire makeup collection when I started this channel. So, um, Amy wants to know, um, will I be doing a collab in 2017? I have no collabs planned for 2017, but... There are some people I would love to collab with in 2017. I just haven't made, made moves to try to collab. Um, as far as collabs with brands, no. Not as of now. Um, I would not say that I wouldn't collab with a brand, but honestly, like if I were to collab with a brand, 
I'm more interested in helping the brands rather than putting my name on something. Like, I'd rather it be called something else, you know, the rainbow palette or something. And then, like, I just help them develop it, but it doesn't say Jen Loves Reviews all over it, you know? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't want to be part of the marketing of it. I would want to help develop it, though. That's just me. Uh, Sarah says, Zoya Pixie Dust is amazing. I agree. Lisa says, what's your favorite highlight palette? All right, let's get some of those out. All right, let's get some out. Best nail polish brand. Um, Julep is my favorite, followed by Zoya. Highlight palettes. Hold on. I'm not as organized as I wish I was. Hold on. Contour palette. Here we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay, so I don't have a lot of highlight palettes that are specifically for highlighting. Most of my palettes that I have are highlight and contour together. What breed is my dog? My dog is a Brittany. Um, they're kind of, they, you could maybe find them under Brittany Spaniels, but he's a Brittany. He's kind of close to the Spaniels, but he's not. Um, this highlight palette by e.l.f. is amazing. Let's swatch. The swatching is fun, and it feels really smooth. When you put your fingers in this, it feels high-end. Um, there's that. And it's just such a nice highlighting palette. The lasting power is not fantastic on it. Let me try to blend it out a little bit because you wouldn't put it on that strength on your face. Let's see if I can get a little bit of shine off of that for you. Ooh, it's so nice. Favorite bronzer? I didn't have a favorite bronzer, but I would tell you if I had to pick one, I would say the Butter Bronzer by Physicians Formula. That's the only bronzer I've ever truly enjoyed. Um, so there's my, that's the e.l.f. one. It's very nice. And then I'll put next to it the Hourglass. Both of these are really good for textured skin because they're, they don't have a from space kind of look. They just kind of brighten up wherever you want to brighten without adding too much sparkle and shine. I just realized I got some dog hair on me. Get off, dog hair. hate when that happens. All right, so down here, these three are the hourglass. So you can tell there really isn't that much difference in the finish between the elves up here and the hourglass down here. And we're talking a huge price difference there. So they're all very, very, very nice. I really like them. And again, these just bring light to the face. They're not from space, like glowy highlighters. Um, oh, Chrisanna says she has two Springer Spaniels. Oh, that's awesome. Is that Chrisanna Ann? Chrisanna Ann Cosmetics? I hope so. I'm trying out her liquid lipstick. She was kind enough to send me liquid lipsticks. Chrisanna Ann Cosmetics, if you've never checked them out, I'm in the middle of testing her liquid lipsticks. Uh, favorite blush and highlight. Uh, my favorite blushes are, uh, let's see, highlights. Let's see, favorite blushes and highlights. Hold on. I wish these doors came out. Hold on. Out really, really quickly. That's the way I feel right now. missing. Okay. So, all right. I'll look in there in a second. Talk about blush and then I'll look back in there because I don't want to keep you waiting too long. My favorite blushes, my favorite formula are really good. Shade. It's just forever. They're amazing. I'm hoping that the chat did not freeze. It looks like it's frozen. Oh, please don't be I aren't saying that it's frozen, but it looks frozen to me. Okay. There we go. Okay. I paused, no worries, I paused while it was frozen. Okay, so I didn't say anything, I didn't miss anything. Okay, so anyway, um, this is the Model Co. blush in Amaretto Sunset. I got this in a, subs in a subscription box. Um, I think I got this in BoxyCharm, maybe. This is really, really, really good. I didn't say anything while it was frozen. I noticed it was frozen, so no worries. So the end stain blush is by the balm, in case we missed that. The end stain blush is by the balm. This is in Houndstooth. I also really like the one in Pinstripe. This is the best blush formula on the Stinked Planet. Um, as far as highlights, I cannot find Mary Luminizer. 
uh, by the balm. It's here somewhere, and I just couldn't find it quickly. Another one I've really been enjoying, surprisingly, that did not get great reviews. Uh, my friend Nancy sent this to me. This is the Pat McGrath Gold um, Gold Highlight. It was part of the 003 collection. I really like this a lot. I'm surprised how much I like this. Whenever I want like a crazy from space highlighter, this is what I grab for. It's just really fun. You know, it's it's very creative and fun, and I love it. And I'm surprised how much I love this because it got terrible reviews, but I don't know. I can't help it. I like it. Um, somebody asked about the ColourPop highlighters. ColourPop highlighters are really nice. They don't last a really long time on my skin. That's the only thing. There is a dupe for um, Becca's Opal, which I think is called Wisp, and then there's a dupe for... Um, that I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called, but there's a dupe for that. But they don't last as long on my face as um, as Mary Luminizer does. It's about the same as Becca's Opal. The Becca highlighters don't last forever on me, so, you know. Um, Brianna says, do you use the darker or lighter shade of the butter bronzer? I use light bronzer. And I don't like the smell of this, by the way. <laughs> People say they love the smell of this. I don't like this. Like, the, I guess because when I was a child in high school, and whenever we would get ready to go to the beach, we would put on, slather on our suntan lotion. It would all, oh, it did freeze. Um, we would slather on our suntan lotion. Hopefully it unfreezes. And then there were so many mosquitoes there. Like, I was always scared that the mosquitoes were going to go after my, um, they were going to go after me, like, wearing the suntan lotion. So when I smelled. <laughs> it's like totally a psychological thing that I know is just in my head but this seriously makes me think of going to the beach when I yeah no <laughs> so I don't like the smell of it but I love the product the product is fantastic if you like the smell of uh, let me see other highlights the wet and wild gold bar hopefully they bring this back this for uh, max what is it max What's it called? Whisper of Guilt. Max Whisper of Guilt. I swatched it next to Whisper of Guilt when I was in Los Angeles. My friend Erica Vieira, and the vlog, excellent podcast. Um, I, I swatched it next to her Whisper of Guilt, and it was exactly the same. So if you can find the What and Wild Gold Bar, definitely recommend. Lasting Power is very, very good. <laughs> Heather says, mosquitoes, great, I'm wearing it today, I hope I don't get attacked. Hopefully there's no mosquitoes this time of year, that would be terrible. And it was really just, that island just had a mosquito infestation, they're surrounded by marshlands, and there was, they used to spray the streets and try to get the mosquitoes gone, but they have serious mosquito infestation, but it was a great childhood to spend there. I loved going there with just lots of mosquitoes. All right, so anyway, so those are my three favorite highlighters. I know stupid Wi-Fi. I'm about to switch over my Wi-Fi. Um, I have a product that I've been trying to review. I'll show it to you because I feel really bad. This company sent this to me a long time ago. If you guys, I don't know if you remember this. You're going to be able to see everything behind you. But this is called a high mirror, and this is a smart mirror. And they've been trying to, I've been trying to review this for over a month, and I can't get it to connect. And it has something to do with the way my Wi-Fi is set up. So I'm working on that. So hopefully when I change the Wi-Fi for the high mirror, hopefully it will work there. Um, but yeah, this is a really, really cool product. Uh, if I can get it to work, I haven't tried it, so I can't review it. But, um, but like it, it um, tracks your skincare. So when you, uh, at least that's what it's supposed to do. When you, um, I'll put the link, if you're watching this in the replay, I'll put the link down in the description below. But again, I can't vouch for it. I've never tried it because it doesn't work with my particular Wi-Fi settings. Um, but it tracks your skincare over time. So it like it takes a picture of you and then it tracks where all your wrinkles are, where your blemishes are, where your discoloration is, where your fine lines are. It tracks all of that. And then after that, they um, it, it tracks it every time to see whether your skincare is actually working or not. It also tells you the weather when you turn it on. It um, plays your Spotify playlists. Um, so it's got a lot of really cool features, but I haven't been able to use it yet. So hopefully in the next couple of days, I'll be able to get this going. And hopefully that will also help the Wi-Fi on the chat. So, um, so yeah, this is going to be a sponsored video, just so you know. Um, so I guess this now is, is chat sponsored by this, I guess, because I just talked about it. But um, 
Yeah, it is a sponsored video, but I'm not going to review it until I've tried it. Um, they know, you know, you guys know me with sponsored videos. I'm not going to, uh, <laughs> and it says, oh, H, no. Oh, I'd say, oh, hell no, I don't want that in my stuff track. I think it's just one of those things. I think it's like $175 or something like that. Yeah, I think it's like $175. Uh, if it works, I think it'll be worth it. Um, yeah, and there's this privacy cap tab that I was talking about. There's this privacy thing so you can go like this and open and close the mirror. So you just have to make sure that you close the, the, uh, the camera when you're not using it. You just have to make sure you close it because that could be not, not very nice to have that open when you're not wanting it open. So the other thing is it does need to be plugged into a wall. So if you have it unplugged, uh, then you know that it's not transmitting anything. So, all right, favorite eyeshadow palette. Let's go back to other things. But if it works, Christy, I think it'll be worth it. If it works, but we'll see. Favorite eyeshadow palette of all time? Probably the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. Let me get that. Let me get my couple of my things. I'm getting a few. Woo! Don't fall, don't fall. No breaking, no breaking. I'm getting a few. Because I have a few. Okay, we'll just get these. Okay. Favorite, probably, if I had to pick one, would probably be the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. I just really love the color selection in here. Uh, I think it's really fun to play with. I like that there's a variation of light, medium, and deep um, tones in here. I feel like the pigmentation on most of these is really, really good. This purple grays out for me, but other than that, I really, really like it. They're just, it's just a fun eyeshadow palette to play with. It's very easy to use, and it smells really good, and I love this palette. I really, really love it. And then the Naked 2 was the one that made me want to do makeup, make, gave me confidence in makeup. I never used eyeshadow except for like little Revlon quads and like things like that. And then I got this and it was like, oh, no. Like I've said this before. I think I've even told that joke before. But it, that's exactly what happened when I used this. I don't have a booty call anymore. My booty call fell out. But I do love this eyeshadow palette. Um, I don't use it as much as I wish I could. But... Whenever I know I need something, I reach for that. Another one that I would recommend that I really like a lot are these Buxom Build Your Own Eyeshadow Palettes. Oh my gosh, the quality on these Buxom eyeshadows is fantastic. And Buxom is a brand that doesn't get a lot of love. They're owned, I believe, by Bare Essentials slash Bare Minerals. I'm pretty sure they're the ones that own Buxom, but oh my gosh, you got to see these. Like this mint green, and this one right here, La La Lavish, is my fave. We put this gold, too. They are so, look how pretty. You see that shift? Reminds me of my nail polish. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh. Right there. Right there. Oh my gosh. Love it, love it, love it. So these are, are wonderful. I uh, definitely recommend these. They seem a little pricey because each, if you think about each individual shadow, I think they're like $45 for one of these. But totally worth it if you fall in love with the shades because they're really, really good quality. Another one that I love that's not available anymore was the Kat Von D. Nivita Loca palette that was available last Christmas. Oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes of all time. And you wouldn't think so with all these bright colors. But what she did that was genius was she put this wheel in the middle of all these neutral shades so you can really balance out these bright colors with these neutrals and create some gorgeous looks. This is one of those palettes where I wish I could play with it more often because it's a, it's a, it's, it's a genius design as far as the shade selection. I, I feel like it's huge though. It's definitely really, really big, but it's really good. The um, Kat Von D Metal Matte is also a really good one, but honestly, like, if I had to pick between this one and the Metal Matte, I would pick this one because I feel like the lasting power on this one is better than the Metal Matte, but I mean, it's, oh, they're both good. They're both really good. Kat Von D, uh, she's had one miss for me as far as eyeshadow palettes, and that was not last Christmas, but the Christmas before, the one that was spiky. That one was no good for me. No bueno, no bueno. The one before that I actually have. Hold on. This one right here. I still keep this out for the occasional use. This was the Spellbinding Eyeshadow Book. This was her first eyeshadow palette that she released for the holidays. And I still, I, I wish I could play with this one more. But this was wonderful too. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't used this in years probably. Here's that. Um, I was talking in the Too Faced, not Too Faced, Tarte. Pro, Tardis Pro Palette video about um, that Kat Von D has a blue-green, like one of those duochromes that's got the blue-green. 
It's also right here. This one's a little more brown. I'm not blue green. What am I talking about? Brown green, like the MAC one. But um, let me swatch that one for you. Put that one here just so you can see it. This one's a little more brown than green. It's a little warmer. But the way that she did this, let me put that back because I went too fast. The way she did this was she did it in quads. So you've got your six quads to play with, but then of course you can go back and forth. It was just really smart design, very fun. So that was the first one that she released. But yeah, I would say those are my favorites. I definitely have other ones I really, really like, like the Too Faced Chocolate Bon Bons palette I really, really like a lot. Um, let me see, what else? The Bombs Nude Dude, I wish I got to use that more. The Lorac um, Pro 2 palette I really like, actually. Um, Catherine says, Catherine Downing, check out her YouTube channel. She says, what is your non-thinking palette that you use and can just put on something? Like, like meaning I don't have to think in order to do it. Um, that would be the Too Faced, um, not Too Faced, the Naked 2 by Urban Decay. This one is my non-thinking palette. I could just go, not have to think. Uh, Stephanie says, somehow I own nothing from Kat Von D. You need to jump on it because it's good stuff. It's really good stuff. She's pretty consistent in her quality. Uh, Jenny T says, that used to happen all the time, and it doesn't now. I'm not sure what that was in reference to. Heather says, can't wait to get a peek of that pastel palette by Kat Von D. Yes! Oh, my gosh. So awesome. I can't wait to see it, too, like what's on the inside. She just sneaked it this week. Um, Tracy says, would you ever hit pan on an item? Have you ever hit pan on anything? <laughs> No, I've never hit pan. No, I don't hit pan. I don't because I'm constantly doing new reviews and stuff. So no, I don't hit pan. Uh, the closest probably to hitting pan I am is probably on the naked too. Um, I'm getting really close to verb. Verb's getting down there. Uh, suspect's a little bit lower, but I don't really hit pan. And, and I wish I could. I want to be able to use some of these palettes in order to hit pan. Um, but yeah, I don't think... I hit pan on like face powders. I'll hit pan on those. Um, I'll run out of eyeshadow primer, of a certain eyeshadow primer. Uh, of course, I recycle through my mascaras. Uh, I run out of brow products. I'll go through a whole brow product. I'll go through skincare like that where I'll finish them. But as far as eyeshadows and stuff, I don't really do that. Um, what makeup product do you go through the most quickly? Great, I answered that. Fantastic, I didn't even mean to. Nancy says, if you get the box, Natalie sent you. Yes, I need to respond to you, Nancy, on that. I think there are a few indie brand eyeshadows, Velvet 59 in, a, and in it, and a Buxom palette. Mm, thank you so much. That's exciting. Um, yes. I need to collect my thoughts, Nancy, before I say anything to the whole crew. Uh, Tracy says, I'm loving the ABH Renaissance and Mario. I took a chance on eBay with the Mario, and it was real and under $50. Ooh, that's like gambling. That's like straight up gambling. That's rolling the dice. I am so happy you won on that one. That's exciting. Terry Lee says, did you guys know if you're on a smartphone, if you tap someone's face, you get the option to go right to their channel? Woo, that's cool. So click on Terry Lee Nephew and Thrifty, click on Catherine Downing, <laughs> and go right to their channels. Check them out. Uh, Heather says, I hit pan on two shades from the Modern Renaissance palette. I was so excited. Wow, already? You must be loving on that because that's a new palette. That's exciting. All right. Let's see. What else haven't we talked about yet? I see. Olivia says, I've hit three pans on my Modern Renaissance palette. Man, you guys are awesome. Lucy says, um, Jen can stop buying makeup. I can't, unfortunately, Lucy, because then I wouldn't have a job anymore. Because <laughs> my job is to review makeup. That's what I do for a living. So, unfortunately, I can't stop buying it. Uh, but... You know, I don't know. That's just what I do. That's my job now. So, Brianna says, Olivia, uh, what eyeshadow? Okay. Julie, she's talking to Olivia. Julie says, what's your favorite lipstick brand? Liquid lipsticks. My favorite liquid lipsticks are the Bare Minerals, the Gen Nudes. They're amazing. The Ofra liquid lipsticks. Absolutely amazing. Um, what else? Those are pretty much it, but I like, but I, I want to preface that, not preface it, but I want to say after that, because I already said which one, um, that I like the more whippy formula. Um, I don't care as much about the lasting power. I care more about comfort. That's just me personally. That's the way that I roll on those kinds of products. Um, 
let's see, ones that, for regular lipsticks, I really like the Bite Beauty lipsticks a lot. I like the CoverGirl. Um, CoverGirl, wait, hold on a minute. The CoverGirl, hold on. Hold up. Hold up. Let's see, let me grab some lipsticks. Maybelline, not CoverGirl. Maybelline. Okay. Another one is um, that I want to mention is the Balms liquid lipsticks. Really, really been enjoying those. Those are very, very nice. They have they're a little bit more lasting power, a little more drying than the um, than the Ofra's and the Bare Minerals ones, but they last longer. So kind of have that little trade off for the Balm ones. Uh, the for drugstore, I had to bring out Touch of Spice. This is Maybelline's Touch of Spice. This is my faves. And if Lynn is here, my friend Lynn from the community, she came to my husband's tattoo studio and got tattooed. She bought Touch of Spice because of me and she didn't like it, which made me feel really sad that she didn't like it. But pretty much everybody loves Touch of Spice, pretty much. Um, and then I do actually really like this Marc Jacobs lipstick. It's very gel-like and creamy. This is in the shade Eat Cake. Let me swatch these for you. Okay, so there's Eat Cake. But I honestly, I don't feel like lipsticks, not liquid lipsticks, but lipsticks necessarily are the most important thing to invest in as there's Touch of Spice. Um, I feel like you can get some really nice lipsticks at the drugstore. I'm not a big lipstick person. I'm more of a liquid lipstick person. So, you know, I, I more will invest in more expensive liquid lipsticks. But regular lipsticks, I'll just get grab shades from the drugstore for the most part. Um, what else did I want to say? I felt, I felt like there was something else in my head and then I lost it. Um, I had it and I lost it. Went out of my head. Aspen says, I just bought Touch of Spice for my lipstick obsessed daughter. She was so excited to have the Jen favorite. Oh, that's awesome. That's very cool. Chloe says, I have eight of the Maybelline Creamy Matte Lipsticks. They're my favorites. Martha says, I tried to use a palette consistently so I could hit pan, especially since there are so many nude palettes. Um, yeah, I totally feel you. Krista says, have you tried the Urban Decay Vice lipsticks? I tried them. I thought they were nice. I thought they were nice. Oh, yeah, Steph, that's what I was going to say, Stephanie. Stephanie A says, Jen, Too Faced La Creme. That is exactly what I was going to say when I was like, oh, what was I just about to say? I lost it. I love the Too Faced La Creme lipsticks. They're very, very nice. They're very hydrating. They feel really good on the lips. Lasting power is good for them for a lipstick. They're good. Really like them. Um, oh, hey, what's up, Alana? She says, Bite Beauty Lab has a lab in New York City where you can make your own custom lip color. And I went there, and I have a video on it. If you search for Bite Beauty Lab, you'll find Yesenia and I's video, Yesenia Cuevas on YouTube. She's linked under that video. She's one of the moderators on our Facebook page, or one of the admins on our Facebook page. Um, but Yesenia and I went to the Bite Beauty Lab in New York, and we had a great time. So you can see us go through the entire process of getting our, li our lipsticks, but they're really expensive. <laughs> really, really expensive. So I think they were like... $50 of lipstick, something stupid, $40. I think at the time they were like $40, but I think they're closer to $50 now. Um, Gabriella says, what makeup trend do you dislike the most? This is me being judgy. I'm just telling you, I have no experience with this, but baking, I feel like, is very specific to younger people because I've heard very negative things about baking if you have any kind of texture on your skins, any kind of fine lines, wrinkles, that it accentuates all of that. But I've personally never tried it. My, my friend Sandra, who's also in the community, we've talked about filming a video together of trying baking <laughs> as women in our late 30s, early 40s, you know, and seeing how it works for us. <laughs> but that one's probably the one I'm the least, I'm the least fond of. Um, oh, no, we frozen again? No! And when we're on Periscope, everybody goes, Elsa? <laughs> What's your favorite foundation, Stacy wants to say, both drugstore and high-end? Elise says, baking's overrated. Yes. Stephanie says, I'm relatively young, 28, and baking looks awful on me. Darlene says, baking is for drag queens. I don't know. I think that I've, I've seen it looking beautiful on lots of different people, especially on Instagram, you know? Oh, is Yesenia here? I didn't know Yesenia was here. Somebody's talking to Yesenia. I didn't know she was here. Sometimes she makes it and she, sometimes she isn't. What's baking, Kathleen wants to know, and then I'll go get my foundations. Baking is when you take um, powder, um, like, a, like a loose powder, 
and you pack it on to your face so that it's super bright and then you leave it there for a certain amount of time. I don't know how long because I've never done it. And then you kind of um, brush it away and it's supposed to really give you like a long lasting matte kind of look. Um, Jen, I'm from Argentina, loving my Renaissance palette. Hit pan on three already. Thank you, Barbie. Thank you, Barbie, for sharing that. That's amazing. So many of you hit pan. There's Yesenia. She is here. I finished one of my bite beauty lipsticks from that video. Oh, and you have over 300 lipsticks. It's such a good one. Such a good one. And it looked beautiful on you. And you'll be able to see her building that lipstick. Anyway, let me go get some foundations. Get some good ones. Okay. Okay, I got a bunch. Because this is, this is a drawer that's not so packed. Um, for BB creams, I like the Garnier BB cream a lot. This is in light medium. And then the Rimmel BB cream, matte nine in one. Uh, skin perfecting super makeup. This is a really good one. My shade is light medium as well. Um, I like both of these a lot. Lasting power is good. Coverage is light, but you can, but it's got enough coverage to even out my skin tone without making me feel like I have too much on. Like these are like nice shopping day kinds of face evening out products. So I really like these two. As far as drugstore foundation, my favorite one is the e.l.f. moisturizing foundation stick that I believe has been discontinued. You can still find it sporadically different places. I'm praying that e.l.f. brings this back because it's so stinking good. Like, I would use this over the, um, over the Hourglass one. I would use it over the, um, the Anastasia one. The Anastasia one does not have very good coverage at all. Um, but this one is fantastic. I really love this. Hopefully you'll be able to find it if you're looking for the Moisturizing Foundation Stick by e.l.f. Uh, this one is in the shade Natural, is my shade there. Another drugstore that I really like is the Maybelline Matte and Poreless, but be careful. I've said this a million times. Be careful if you have dry skin. Some people with dry, dry skin don't really like this. So um, if you have normal to oily skin, which is what it's recommended for, I recommend this one. My shade is number 120. It matches my skin tone perfectly. As far as high end, uh, the Too Faced Born This Way foundation, I do really like it, but it doesn't make you look like you're born this way. It definitely is a little bit more thicker coverage. It's a little bit more, um, not cake face, but it's a little more opaque. So I use this a lot for filming. It looks really, really nice for filming. It's beautiful for that. This shade is vanilla. And I just really, really like this foundation. Lasting Power is amazing on this. Uh, if you want a little more found, like sometimes I'll do like one of these BB creams and I want just a little more coverage. And I'll top that with a Too Faced Cocoa Powder Foundation. It smells like cocoa. This is something I'm about to hit pan on. I can see it. It's coming, but it smells really, really good. And it's just a really nice way to bump up the coverage of your foundation. My shade is light medium. And another one I really like is the Hourglass Immaculate Liquid to Powder Foundation. This is probably my Holy Grail high-end foundation. Uh, this is one that you can build up the coverage. So you can start off with like a light to medium coverage, and you can build it up to closer to full. I don't think it gets all the way up to full because then you're going to end up with cake face, but it's a really nice foundation. I'm, this is probably almost gone in here. I'll be sad when this runs out. So it's really, really good. Um, Irish Rose says, is that hourglass stick foundation good for dry skin? That's a great question for the collective brain of makeup awesomeness. I'm honestly not sure. I can tell you, though, that it does feel hydrating when I put it on. It definitely feels um, not dry when you put it on. Like, it doesn't feel um, like it's pulling on the skin. It's definitely a more moist, hydrating formula. Same with the, uh, the Anastasia one. I feel like the Anastasia one is a little more moist than the hourglass, like coming from my memory. But, um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice one. Uh, I, I would imagine it might be good, but I'll, we'll have to keep an eye on the collective brain for that. I'm missing a lot in the chat and it seems like there's a lot of good things. So I'm going to scroll up a little bit. Carolyn says, I dislike the Too Faced foundation. It was cakey. And that's definitely what I'm, what I would definitely want to say. I did not find this to be cakey specifically, Carolyn, but I do find it to be more full coverage. So... Yes, I can see why some people might find it cakey, depending on what you're used to. Like, if you're used to wearing BB creams and stuff, and you get this, this is going to be too much. It's going to be overkill for you. I totally agree. Carolyn, thank you so much for bringing that up. I appreciate it. Aspen says, Matt and Poreless oxidizes like crazy on my oily skin. That is great to know. Thank you, Aspen. And then She Diary says, I like Marc Jacobs Genius Gel. Hold on a second. Hold up, hold up. 
All right, I'm back. Okay, so Nancy was kind enough to send this to me as well, and I have really been enjoying this, but I'm not quite ready to review. This is the shade Beige Light and the Remarkable Foundation by Marc Jacobs. I'm still testing it. It's a tad bit darker on me, but I can deal with it. I can bring it down a little bit, and it's fine, but I really, really like this so far, and I'm hoping that the screen is not frozen. No, it's not. Okay, good. Um, and I've really been enjoying this. I haven't tried the Genius Gel. This is the Remarkable. Um, uh, I don't know 100% whether this is worth the price or not. Again, I'm still testing it, but I do own this. Just wanted to mention that. All right, let me go down a little bit here. Steph says, I do the Wayne Goss foundation technique. I prime and I put a little bit of foundation on and really set it into the skin. It makes it poreless. Nice. Thank you, Steph. If you are not subscribed to Wayne Goss, oh my gosh, such a great channel. Such a great channel. Wonderful tips there. Tammy says, sometimes I go over the BB cream with a mineral foundation, but not always and not usually during the work week. Yes. And another, a good mineral foundation. Let me see. No, I don't have any mineral foundations except for the Mary Kay one, but I do really like the Mary Kay one. I want to get the mineral foundation from Bare Minerals, but I don't own that yet. Uh, let's see. Sarah says, what's your ride or die brand? Your favorite brand of all time, mine is Too Faced. Mine used to be Too Faced, Sarah, and Too Faced has been letting me down lately. Speaking of that, I do have a re full review of the white chocolate chip palette that I'm finishing up right now. I'm doing the, I'm, I filmed swatches last night. I'm editing the swatches. I have to edit the ingredient analysis, and then it's done. So I'm hoping that it'll be up tomorrow or Tuesday, um, but that's my next video coming up is the Too Faced White Chocolate Chip Palette. Um, but they've been letting me down lately, so I can't say Too Faced anymore. Now it's The Balm. Uh, the Balm has always been one of my favorite brands, but I feel like they're the most consistent as far as quality, so The Balm is now my ride or die brand, but it used to be Too Faced. It did, and I can't say it anymore. Uh, Latina says, my husband Julio would like to invite you and the family over for breakfast this morning. <laughs> he would like to know you didn't know that you totally rock that no makeup look and he also loves your hair. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> well, tell Julio I said hi. And I'm sure he hears the Julio down by the schoolyard joke way too much, so I'm not going to make that joke. And that's the first thing that went into my head. But hello, Julio, hello. Have a wonderful breakfast. I wish I could be there. <laughs> You're a nice person. Okay, Brianna says, I really didn't like the Too Faced foundation. I really wanted to like it. Brianna, I would love to know why you didn't like it. I do like it. I have to say, I have to tell you what I think, and I liked it. So it definitely doesn't make you look born this way, though. I'll tell you that. Um, Steph says, "If it, oh, I lost it. Man, I missed... Yesenia says, what about the It Cosmetics BB Cream? I have the It Cosmetics CC Cream. It's the wrong shade for me. I need to get the right shade. So far, I like it, except for that it's just not the right shade, so I have trouble, um, I have trouble trying it by itself because I can't, it's too yellow. It's very yellow on me. I think I have it in medium by accident because I think that was what was given to me a Generation Beauty like a year ago or so. It's probably getting old at this point. I need to just, just suck it up and buy a new one in the right shade. Um, Fiza says, in which video does Wayne Goss talk about the technique? Oh, I don't know. Hmm. You'll have to ask Steph about that one. Uh, Amy says, I used bare metals for 10 years, but I like it, the It Celebration Foundation better. Nice. Good to know. Uh, Cindy says, oh, you guys are talking to each other. Hold on a second. Deanne says, I love the bomb, but it's expensive in Canada. Um, they do have the sales. Hopefully the sales are, um, are effective in Canada. Uh, definitely wait for the sales because they do do that 50% off sale. I don't know if you can do Holt Look in Canada. Probably not, Deanne, but, um, but yeah, wait for those 50% off sales. They just had one. I would imagine they'll have another one in the spring. They usually have them about every four months or so. Heather says, yeah, not feeling the love for the Too Faced anymore. I love Kat Von D more now. Urban Decay has been letting me down, too. Urban Decay, for me, has been more consistent lately than Too Faced has. Um, as far as the, um, let me see, Kat Von D. Kat Von D has been very consistent for me as well. Um, I would say Kat Von D is at, like, a 90% for me, where the Balm is at, like, a 95%, where Too Faced is at, like, a 75 to 80%. 
um, accuracy for me. That's just me estimating my old teacher brain. 75% <laughs> accuracy on comprehension. Now, <laughs> my teacher brain's kicking in. Uh, Drema, Drema says uh, that chocolate chip pellets are so tiny. They are tiny. Do I? I think, oh, it's right here. Yay. It is. They are, they are small. Um, that's why they're a chip, I guess. That's kind of the idea behind it is they're a chip. But, um, but I'm gonna, I'll go into the full review this week. You'll see it. But, yeah, they are kind of tiny. I'll show you next to my iPhone 6. So that's it next to my iPhone 6, just so you can get a visual of kind of how big it is. They're pretty small. Let's see what else. Uh, I used to love Too Faced, but never even bought a chocolate bar palette. Chocolate palette's good, though. I have to tell you. I have to tell you. Uh, Mole Loves Makeup says, Jane Iredell Mineral Foundation is way better than Mary Kay. Good to know. Fantastic. Um, Ezra Dot says, Wet n Wild just launched new foundation. Super curious. I'm super curious about that, too. Sadie says, love the ball, but their shadows don't stick around very long. Sad because they're stinking cute palettes. Um, yeah, I feel like the lasting power on the shadows is not fantastic, but I do really like their palettes. I'm with you. I'm with you. And they blend really nicely into each other. Chocolate chip palette credit card size? No, it's bigger than a credit card. The credit card's probably like this. So, but, but close. Close. Um... Sadie says, I'm so sick of companies blasting out products just to have a million on the market, especially when they lack quality. Amen, Sadie. Amen to that. Jenny says, um, Colored Rain. Oh, Colored Rain is an Amy brand that I've heard wonderful things about. Wonderful things. And I believe that Nancy sent me some stuff from Colored Rain to try, which I'm excited about. Uh, Brianna, I love my Jane Iredell Mineral Foundation. Nice to know. Um, let's see. Yesenia says, Ed Cosmetics told me they're working on more shades for their face products, as they should. Tarte Pro to Go is great, Karen says. And Fiza says, Colored Rain has amazing liquid lipsticks. Irish Rose wants to know if the Too Faced Peach Palette is worth it. Let me get it for you. And we'll talk about it. Okay, I do have a full review on... It's called the Smelly Palette Smackdown. It's one of my most popular videos where I compare the peach palette with the chocolate bar palette and the peanut butter and jelly palette and the chocolate bonbons. Um, and I compare them all so you can see which one's right for you. So that might be something you want to check out. But as far as you guys know, this is coming out this week, re-releasing again. Um, I like the way it smells. It smells like peach candy to me. I do enjoy the smell. I know some people don't enjoy the smell. I personally really like it. It is very strong, though. Just warning you. But I do enjoy it. You, what you have to do is, okay, number one thing is if you have My Skin Toner Lighter, there's really not a lot of variation for lid color for us. You've got this some light stuff over here, but if you want to go light to dark, there really isn't a lot of light going on. I feel like this palette is best for people medium to deep skin tones because you're going to have a lot more wiggle room, a lot more play space over here in these deeper colors. Um, as far as people with lighter skin tones, of course you can put a darker shade on your lid if you choose to, but there's nowhere really to go without looking like you got punched in the eye as far as making it even deeper. So that's kind of why, like, like for example, if I have a medium skin tone, I can put like this green on my, or, or a deeper skin tone, I can put this green all over my lid and then deepen it up with some of these deeper shades over here and it'll be beautiful. But if I have a lighter skin tone and I put this on my lid and then I deepen it up over here, it's just gonna look dark. It's just gonna look dark. Where well, you're gonna have more separation of color if you have a medium to deeper skin tone. So I feel like that's really the best people for this palette are people with medium to deeper skin tones. But that being said, you really can just use one of these colors over here. If you are of a lighter skin tone, you can use one of these colors over here just all the time. You just don't have as many choices. Um, but I do like the color selection. The color selection is very nice. Um, and I don't feel like the colors muddy together. I wish, like, for example, this Cobbler and Caramelized, they're very similar in shade. So I wish that they had included something a little bit different. I mean, they're different, but on the eye, they really pretty much look the same. So I wish that they had included a little more variation in some of these. I mean, even this one, let me put these back, and I'll put this one, Peach Pit. So Cobbler, Caramelized, and Peach Pit. Put these back for a minute. I can't get that off. Okay, we'll just put them over here. 
So do you see how they're all similar? They're not the same, but they're similar. So I feel like I wish they had given us a little more variation there as far as tone. Um, but, I mean, it's a nice palette. It really, you just have to decide whether this shade selection calls to you. Does it call to you? If it does, totally get it. If it doesn't, skip it. Jenny says, I love the peach palette, but you're right about not using, um, not using multi-deep colors in a look. Just look dark on light skin tones. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, just keep that in mind. You have to decide for yourself whether it's something you want to go with. I, you know what I'm really excited about? My friend Erica that I talked about earlier, Erica Vieira, whose um, podcast is Beauty in the Vlog. You can download it on um, iTunes. It's the most popular beauty podcast on all of, on, of YouTube, and she interviews YouTubers. She just interviewed Coffee Break with Danny. She just interviewed Sanders Kennedy. Um, and I forget who else she just interviewed. She, interviewed. she interviews all kinds of people. So anyway, so she went to the peach party. You guys know if, if you saw on Instagram that, that Too Faced had that big, huge party for the release of their peach products. Well, they got these big goodie bags of all of the peach products. So she got the highlighting palette and she said, it's awesome. So that's really the only thing I'm super excited about from the peach collection is the highlight palette. I, I'm going to have a hard time not purchasing the highlight palette. Uh, the blush just looks nice to me, but I don't think I'm going to purchase it. It's really that highlight palette. It's calling me. It's calling to me. It's saying, buy me. So we'll see whether it actually gets bought or not. I don't know. Because I bought too much stuff lately. Especially the Smashbox palette. I was like, Ugh. when I bought the two Smashbox palettes, I was like cringing. Like, do I really need these? But I really want to review them. I blame it on Tati. Tati need to buy it. So um, Boston Barbie doll says, I love her podcast. It's so good. It's so good. I actually have an interview on there. She interviewed me uh, in April, I believe she interviewed me, uh, about building community on YouTube. So it's pretty great. There you go. Thank you, Tabitha, for putting in the chat. It's called Beauty and the Vlog, and her name is Erica Vieira, E-R-I-K-A-V-I-E-R-A. -E -E yes. Uh, definite recommend. Heather says, I may get the peach dupe for Makeup Revolution instead. That is definitely an option. Definitely an option. Donna says, I'm returning the new Smashbox palette. Oh, no. Well, I can always return it if I don't like it. Oh. Aspen says, Makeup Revolution Neutrals and Neutrals has tons of dupe colors for the peach palette. I really enjoy it and the price without the peach craziness. Nice. Very good. Arwen says, I'm so excited for that palette. Yes, Jen. April says, I'm dying to know everyone's opinion on Becca re-releasing the face palette. Oh, my goodness. Well, let me show you. I have it. Hold on. Let me get it. So if you guys don't know, this, this palette by Jaclyn Hill, the, Be the Becca Face Palette, um, this was supposed to be limited edition. And everybody died over it. Everybody wanted it. It was in stores, though, for quite a long time, even though it was limited edition. It was in stores for a while. I picked this up when I was on my road trip this summer. And I do really, really like it a lot. But what people are getting upset about is they did re-release it for a short period of time, and then it sold out again. I haven't heard that it's coming back for a third time. But people get really upset like when, somebody, when they say something's going to be limited edition, and then they re-release it. Kind of like the Peach Palette was supposed to be limited edition, and then they're re-releasing it. I don't know if the peach palette supposed to, is going to be permanent or not. If they're smart, they'll make it permanent. But at the same time, it's like I can see where people are coming from when you rush and rush and rush and rush and rush to try to get something. Uh, and then it, it's limited edition and you get it. And then it comes back permanent. It's like, well, why did I even rush to get it? Like I can see that side. But then more people get to enjoy it too. So I see that side as well. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, this, I mean, it's a nice face palette. I really like it. I don't feel like the Lasting Power is fantastic on it, but I do really like the shades on it. They're beautiful. I'll swatch for you. How am I doing? We'll do underside for swatches. So this one is Champagne Pop. This one is Prosecco Pop. And then we'll do these two because I only have, well, we can do this too. We'll do all of them. Okay, so there's that. And I'll put them on the inside. So those are the two highlighters. And then these are the blushes. I know that's not the best swatches ever, but that's the Jaclyn Hill one. Uh, so these are the two highlights, and then these are the cheek products. I feel like this one's a little crazy. I never reach for this one. It's a little crazy. It reminds me of like a NARS shade, you know, like what NARS does sometimes where they release those crazy shades that are like, ah, what do I even do? What do I even do with that? But what's nice is to mix this with one of these, and that's really nice. Also, mixing mixing any of the blushes with the highlights really is a beautiful look. So. But yeah, mm. 
Jenny says, I'm not returning the chip palettes, but one shade in, wait, I'm not returning the chip palettes, but one shade in a look only. The muddy, they muddy horribly and don't blend like other Too Faced shadows out. Oh, no. Um, Arwen says, I love the blushes in that palette. April says, it gives you a buy now sensation. You do, and then it comes back anyway. Yep, exactly. And you rush and rush and rush to get it. And then you're like, well, I could have just waited. Gabriella says, I was extremely disappointed with that palette and the blushes look like clown makeup on my medium skin and it's just too glittery. I can totally see that. I can totally see that. Carolyn said, Amanda, about something. I don't know. Um, Dreama says, I did about the product. So I, I understand that um, being upset over bringing it back. Personally, I'm glad they brought it back because I missed it the first time and I was able to get it this time. Tracy says, would you consider filming the makeup tutorial using the products I hate video? Sometimes YouTubers seem to be picky, seem too picky with products, but when all the makeup is used together, it really makes a difference. I haven't thought about doing that one. I've seen that that exists, but I have not thought about doing that. Uh, a lot of times, honestly, I get rid of products that I don't like. They end up either give, being given to someone else if I feel, feel like they're usable, or they end up in the trash, or they end up returned. So I don't know if I have a lot of products that I hate. I'd have to look through my collection and see if I have enough to make a video out of it. Uh, melt stacks. Melt stacks are nice. I have to say it. I think they're overpriced, but I, they're very, very nice. Yesenia says, I never use my peach palette. I bought it for my collection. And I think that's another reason to buy the peach palette is if you're a collector and you specifically want this as part of your collection. Some people collect, you know, miniature classic cars. Some people collect action figures. Maybe you collect eyeshadow palettes. Totally valid thing to collect. <laughs> I personally would rather collect eyeshadow palettes than, than little model classic cars. That's just me. About the same price, maybe a little less for the uh, <laughs> for the eyeshadow palettes sometimes. Brianna says, Jen, remember you saying that you wanted to try more indie brands. What brands are you wanting to try? Oh my gosh, so many. Um, what is it, Cake? There's one that's like Bakery, Beauty Bakery. Looks amazing, colored rain. Um, there's a bunch of them that just look awesome. Uh, I want to try more... So those are the two that pop on the top of my head. Let's see. Those are the two that pop right right at the front of my, my brain. But there's definitely other ones. But I have been trying a lot of, I went, I went Etsy crazy and I bought from six different Etsy brands. So um, I'm looking forward to filming that video. I'm still in like the later section of testing for that stuff. Gina says, my husband has a Hot Wheels collection. Much cheaper sometimes. <laughs> Elise says, yeah, just look at Tara, Tara, uh, Tara Baby's collection. It blows my mind every time I watch her. I know. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Yeah, I need more Makeup Geek in my life. I don't have enough Makeup Geek. Um, yeah, Tara has those big, like, utility cases for her makeup. Like, And she's constantly doing hauls of, like, 15 products. Like, she does probably two hauls a month of, like, 15 products that she gets. Like, And not cheap products, like, expensive products. But that's why I love Tara, though, because Tara has such a uh, perspective because she's tried so much makeup. She has such a great perspective on what's good and what's not because she's tried everything from Tom Ford down to, like, Wet n' Wild and, you know, like the, the drugstore, the least expensive drugstore stuff all the way up to the most expensive high end. So, you know, she's got a great perspective, which is one of the reasons why I absolutely love her. And I just love her personality, too. Uh, let's see, uh, Lillian, Lydia. Lydia Ann says, have you tried the full spectrum palette from Urban Decay? I have not. I passed on that one. Brescia Cosmetics uh, is a small indie brand. Gally Sally says, yes, and that's another one I would like to try. Arwen says, I got the unicorn, best unicorn brush holder on Etsy. Nice. Makeup Geek is amazing. I have some Makeup Geek. I have some of the duochrome loose eyeshadows, and I also have, from a long time ago, some of the pressed eyeshadows from when she first launched. I don't have a lot. Most underrated makeup brands? Probably the, the Balm is very underrated, in my opinion. Did anyone try Kathleen Light's nail polish yet? I haven't tried it yet. Um, other underrated brands? Buxom. I feel like Buxom is definitely underrated. Uh, Ofra is hyped up. But people outside of YouTube don't know anything about Ofra. Uh, but Ofra's got some good products. Their liquid lipsticks and their highlighters especially. I like their face primer, too. No one ever talks about their face primer. Their face primer is really nice. Uh, other underrated brands? Those are the two big ones that I think of that nobody talks about. I love the Judas Place palettes, but again, those are hyped up, but nobody knows about them outside of YouTube. 
Black Moon, yeah, that's another brand I'd love to try. I've heard great things about Black Moon. Um, I'm going to say Angel. and Angel? 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 Uh, let me see. Anything else? Merle Norman. I've never tried anything by Merle Norman. Actually, I think I tried some of their liquid lipsticks, not li like lip glosses or something once. Lunatic Lab, that's another great brand that I've heard of. I've never tried anything by them. Yeah. And Chris, Christy says, I love, love, love Lunatic Labs. So many good things. So many good things, you know, to try. So many brands. All right, it is 11.01. I should probably get out of here. Um, but I want to thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate it a lot. Um, it's been great talking with you. If you have any suggestions for chats, I would love to know some suggestions. I'm, like, looking at myself now. I've been looking at myself this whole time, and I'm like, Oh my gosh. Um, but anyway, if you have any suggestions for things you want to talk about, we are going to have chat next week. Uh, same time, same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, it's going to be here 10 a.m. next week as long as nothing goes wrong. Uh, but after that is Christmas, so we won't have a chat Christmas. The next week is New Year's. I haven't decided yet whether we're going to do a New Year's one or not. Uh, New Year's is really special to my husband and I. It's the night that we met. It was New Year's Eve. So usually we spend time together on New Year's Eve and New Year's morning. Uh, so I don't know whether we're going to do chat New Year's either. So next week we're definitely doing it, but I don't know about the next two weeks. Definitely not Christmas. That's definitely not there. <laughs> so, um, and then the show, What's in the Makeup show is going to be modified. Uh, we're not sure if we're going to have a Christmas show. We will probably have a modified What's in the Makeup show on New Year's Day, the one where I do just the pictures and the voiceover. But we haven't decided whether we're going to do uh, a picture and voiceover one for Christmas Day or not, or if we're just going to skip it for Christmas Day. And then just put everything into the New Year's Day um, show. So we're still working on that. But, yeah, thank you so much for being here. If you, uh, if you are catching this on the replay, uh, this does take a little while to fully render. So if you're watching this and it's only a few minutes of it, it's because YouTube hasn't fully rendered it, so be patient, and it will be fully up, I'm hoping, as long as YouTube does their job. What else do I want to tell you? Cafe Press Store, if you're looking for gifts for the Gen Rose Reviews slash Collective Brain Makeup Awesomeness slash What's Up In Makeup Fan In Your Life, uh, Cafe Press slash Gen Rose Reviews. Uh, what's On My Face video, not What's On My Face, but the Getting Ready What's On My Face video is on What's Up In Makeup.com along with the Where To Buy page, so if you looked on What's Up In Makeup, uh, What's up in makeup the show and you want to know where to buy anything, you can always go to what's the .com and go to the where to buy page and I'll let you click. So you can go directly to buy or see where you can buy any of the products in the show. Uh, any other self promo stuff I need to do? I think that's pretty much it. So all right, you guys have a wonderful week. I have my um my this is coming up this week and I forget what else. Lots of good stuff coming up this week on the channel. So hopefully you're subscribed for now or you're subscribed. Subscribe! <laughs> if you're here, you're probably already subscribed. Then, so, all right, you guys, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you guys next week. All right, mad love.